This is Cooper Carnival, the newest level in Return to Yoshi's Island 64. It features a roller coaster, a free fall, a spooky ghost house, and a lot of cute character interactions. The idea for this level is that it's a theme park that Bowser built for his minions, who are all giant fans of Bowser. The whole level with sub areas has over 20,000 triangles. The main area itself has 7,000, with a lot of actors around, which results in the game rendering over 8,000 triangles every single frame. The original game would never render more than 3,000 triangles in a frame, and it will start lagging a lot long before that. Bob on Battlefield, for example, has just below 1,100 triangles. While rendering the NPCs in this level will typically add 800 to 1300 triangles a frame. So how come this game runs full FPS on the real N64? Let me preface this by saying that obviously the previous source code rewrite video I've done helped a lot in making this possible. But that alone is not nearly enough for a level this big. We have to apply some tricks and cheats specifically to this level as well to make this many triangles work properly. The level is divided into three sections that each hold three individual sets of polygons. They render geometry depending on how high the camera and what the camera angle is at the moment, so that we can hide polygons from other areas if you are unable to see them anyway. Let's assume we are in the area right here with the free fall. On a very low camera, we can hide all the polygons outside our current area. A middly high camera will enable all of these polygons and the very high camera will have to enable the rest of these polygons as well. If we turn the camera, you can see that there is a lot of polygons that are still not being rendered. These are only rendered when you're in their respective areas. Your first thought at seeing this should be, but Kays, how come the game doesn't start lagging when the camera is high? We render so many polygons here. A good question, TJ Henry Yoshi. There's a very good reason high polygon counts matter less when you're higher. Most of the time is actually spent filling in pixel colors rather than drawing triangles. That means the load of processing more triangles is going to be offset by the lessened load of drawing less pixels. Take these screenshots here for example. As you can see, when we're on the floor, we fill in the whole screen, but we also have to process less triangles. While when we are high up, we only fill in about half the screen while processing all the triangles. Those two processes weigh up against each other and enable us to render more polygons when we are high up. In reality, it's a bit more complicated than this, but this simplification is good enough to make this point. I will explain a bit more later. This means we can hit a somewhat stable 30 FPS in the entire level. There are theoretically more efficient culling techniques we could use. However, the tooling and setup required to do this it would make it very difficult to edit in the future and I don't want to consider techniques like that viable during development. If I had infinite time to make a game, I would apply those culling techniques, but since I don't, this is the best you're going to get. NPC animations take a lot of computing power. That's why in a lot of modern games, you can see these absolutely hideous low FPS animations far in the background. This is true even in the Mario 64 engine, and prior mods I've made started lagging pretty hard despite not even having 2000 triangles just from a few animated actors. In the demo of this game, you can actually see the FPS dropping far below 30 from this. It's noteworthy that my optimized source code can render animated actors about 6 times as fast as the original game, meaning it's not nearly as bad as in this clip here, but it's expensive nonetheless. In my game, I've opted to detect whether you play on N64 or an emulator. On emulator, we simply enable infinite draw distance and don't worry about this. On an N64, we have this cute little pop-in animation to hide that the pop-in is happening at all. I refuse to go with the low FPS animation approach because it looks completely hideous and for me it ruins the immersion. Let me expand on the pixel drawing I've mentioned earlier. Consider this crusty stock image here as a 3D scene. If we draw the mountain wall first and then the house, we will end up filling all these pixels with color and depth values and then we fill the pixels above the house again with the colors and the depth values of the house. We can save the time required to write all the depth and color values behind the house by rendering the house first. This is the principle behind Z sorting and it's a huge technique on the N64. By pre-sorting the polygons in this level, we can prevent this from happening. We just need to sort the polygons in the middle in front of the area specific ones. And since the camera is angled downwards, we sort triangles from high to low. 
So what's the actual content of this level? I'm sure you're also curious about what this level is actually about. Let me show you around. I won't spoil any of the seven stars in this level, but let me show you the main attractions. We've got the sick roller coaster here that all of Bowser's minions love. There's some shy guys around that have bought merch of their favorite celebrity Bowser. If you want to be a mean plumber, you can give these guys a mild depression by popping their balloons. It's very funny. We've got Bowser's victory museum here where he showcases all the times he's beaten Mario, which this totally happened. We've got a spooky ghost house where you can get spooked by Boos. And of course, Bowser hired entertainers to dress up as him to entertain his minions. The minions love your Mario costume and they will ask you to act as the butt of their jokes. And that's all, I hope you get excited for this game. As usual, shoutouts to all my Patreons, it wouldn't be possible without the support. Quiz 8 is actually also almost done, but I'm not sure when I can preview this. I am also working on a video documenting the changes to the sound engine I've made, where I've gained around 25% performance. After my source rewrite, a lot of people asked for merch and I did deliver. You can check out my merch store where you can get either the Rambo shirt or the crying DMCA bonk cat. I just want to reiterate that currently you cannot download the game and there is no Patreon perks for downloading the game either. The only way you can play this game is to wait until I release it. Due to legal issues, I don't want to release the game to anyone before it's actually done because I would just risk getting myself screwed over.